What's up everybody? It's Corey from Golden Press here today and uh, put together a little springtime vector pack and I'm gonna walk you guys through how to make a t-shirt design utilizing that. Spring has sprung and the birds they're <laughs> chirping, the flowers are blooming, the bees are buzzing. In like manner, I've created this springtime vector pack. It's so good. If you are living under a rock and uh, have missed everything that we've been doing this past year, uh, over on screenprinting.com, you know, Go Golden Press Studio has been working very hard at putting together a ton of uh, vector packs and downloadable assets. If you are snoozing on that, snooze no more and check it out. But yeah, you can definitely pick up this good old springtime vector pack that I put together. ASAP, link will be in the description and all that kind of goodness. But with all that said, let's hop into this good old springtime vector pack and uh, make a t-shirt design with it. So here we are everybody. We got this slick and savory vector pack. So I drew a bunch of flowers over here. I drew some plants. I got this beautiful orange tree, you know, and, and like in springtime, you think of the bees, you think of the birds. And uh, so yeah, we got all these bees, plants, honeycomb, the whole gamut. And uh, so let's, uh, let's grab some of these elements and make a design. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna copy this bee and this honeycomb. I'm gonna hit Command C to copy those bad boys. And I'm gonna hit File, go to New, and I'm gonna make a new document. It's 13 by 19 inches because that's the size of our transparencies that we use and uh, might as well start with uh, that. Command V to, to paste these uh, bees and honeycombs on this canvas. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to enlarge this bee and bring her on up, make it a good reasonable size, and we are gonna align it to our artboard to make it right in the center. And we can also grab this honeycomb and kind of make that bigger. And I was thinking maybe stacking these guys on top of each other, uh, you know, something kind of like that. But obviously we don't want them all overlaid like that. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to click on this B and uh, you know, just a good thing to always do, or I like to always do, is make things compound paths. So I ungrouped that and then I hit Command eight, made it a compound path. I'm gonna do the same with this little honeycomb. And uh, look, there we go, Command-8, Compound Path. It's just, it's gonna help us out in the future. So, select the B. We're gonna go up to Object, and we're gonna go down to Path, and Offset Path. And uh, you can see that it just does this big outline all around it, and it's set to 0.25 inches, and that actually looks like a pretty good uh, distance. And we're gonna hit OK. So we got this uh, this guy outlined. I'm gonna hit the little eyedropper and switch it to white. And I'm just gonna grab both of these and hit Command and right bracket and put it in the front just so it's over top of this so we can kind of see what we're working with. And I just wanna play with the sizing on this honeycomb just to get it exactly what I want. I might make it a bit bigger. That looks pretty good. Um, I don't like that I can see a little bit of it right there and I'm just gonna get rid of that by just grabbing a couple anchor points and pulling those uh, up and out of, out of view just so it makes it look a little cleaner. And I dig that, I believe in that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select that whole outline area and then I'm also gonna select uh, my little honeycomb. I'm gonna go down to our Pathfinder tool and hit minus front. And what that does, it just punches out uh, that whole thing. And you can see now that uh, it's no longer white, but it's on a transparent, like it, it's cut out. So we can see through it. It's just, uh, that's good design principles, people. Just do that. Now we need some words for this design. And you could go and grab the little circle tool and type on a path and type out, you know, a beautiful little word like be kind. That's pretty sweet. And uh, you could do that. But 
If you know me at all, I like to make things custom. I like to make things crispy. And so I'm gonna pull out the iPad and I'm gonna do my own hand lettering and write be kind myself because fonts aren't good enough for me every once in a while. Sometimes they're, they're, I like fonts, hey, don't get me wrong. But I also like to do my own stuff. So let's customize this bad boy. Back over here on the iPad and uh, I'm just gonna write out with uh, this cool little brush right here. You know, it's, it looks cool. I'm just gonna write out be kind in just my own way. Yeah, I dig that. Let's do kind. Right on, right on. So we got our be kind written out right there. Looks good, you know, and uh, what I'm gonna do is just save this, hit that little wrench up there. Save it as a JPEG, doesn't matter too much. Just got my white background, my black letters, and I'm going to airdrop that over to my computer. So we got our be kind, got it over here in our downloads, and I'm just gonna bam, drop that right there on our artwork that we're working with. But it's, a, uh, it's just a picture right now, you know? It's this little JPEG, and so what I'll do Swing over here to image trace. If uh, you don't got that bad boy in the side panel, you can hit window, you can find it right there. But uh, I'm just gonna hit this hand done preset that I created in the past. How uh, image trace works is that uh, you got all these little sliders. Uh, for me, for hand drawn stuff, especially on the iPad, I'm typically got my thresholds at 97. I have my paths at 97 as well. I got my corners, what do you guessed? 97, baby. And I have my noise set to one, and most importantly, I got ignore white selected. And boom, expand that, that looks good. I'm happy with how that looks. And uh, I'm gonna ungroup this, boom. You know, so yeah, we, you know, we got our old, old font version over here. We'll drag that over there. Let's get rid of these fonts. And let's make that the same color as this, cause you know, continuity. And we can just grab these sweet little B letters and these sweet little kind letters and uh, just position them how we think would look great. Cool, cool. And I'm gonna do that, uh, that little offset path one more time just cause I, that little tip of the eye is sticking in there, so. There we have it, you know, we got a cool little design that we could slap on a t-shirt that could look pretty slick. And yeah, there we go guys. You know, we got a cool little shirt design and I threw together some quick little mock-ups for you guys to peep your eyes on. You know, there you go. There's some cool looking shirts and just uh, show you, man, it's just that easy to make a little shirt design utilizing these, this good old vector pack. So there you guys have it. Just a kind of quick and simple little t-shirt design tutorial for you. Um, just kind of showing you how you can grab these elements and piece them together and create your own cool shirt design that's, you know, gonna look great. Yeah, you know, uh, this whole vector pack was just kind of inspired by springtime and that kind of stuff. And I know it's a little different than my normal style that, that you guys might be used to seeing. But, you know, maybe you have some clients like some small boutiques or things like that that are selling these awesome kind of fun, whimsical graphic tees. This might be the perfect pack for you to, to do that. So check it out on screenprinting.com. You're gonna love it, I promise it. I gotta, I gotta say, you're gonna love it. So I hope you learned something. Hopefully you picked up some tips from this video and uh, have a great day. We'll see you there and we'll uh, see you in the air. And uh, we'll see you on screenprinting.com, yeah. Hot dogs, later. Art.